In today's video, I'm bringing you 17 exciting tips that you might have missed out on because ChatGPT just released a new feature called 4.0 with Canvas. This makes it so much easier to create living, breathing documents inside of ChatGPT and iterate on them. Whether you're writing or you're coding or you're just an AI enthusiast trying to stay on the edge of trends, this video is going to help you get a firm grasp on this new tool that just got released to us. And I personally did so much research in the past 48 hours to make sure that by the end of this video, you will be a pro when it comes to using ChatGPT 4.0 Canvas. As I said, I did a lot of research. This took a lot of work. So please go ahead and leave a like on this video if you enjoy this content. Tip number one is to use the model switcher. When you open up ChatGPT, you might not see that you're in 4.0 with Canvas yet. If that's the case, you can click on this drop down up here and you can click on GPT 4.0 with Canvas. It may say beta next to it, but click this and that should enable it for you. Tip number two when it comes to using ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas is to utilize the Canvas feature for writing and coding. So I have this prompt right here that I've pasted in and I actually want to create a comprehensive textbook on gravitational theory for advanced undergraduate or graduate level physics students. So I have this prompt all complete. Let's go ahead and send it off to ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. So this sidebar here that just rendered our result is what we call the canvas. And I can click into here and I can actually edit different pieces of it. Tip number three is to use the canvas to actually edit your document. So when I click anywhere into the canvas, I can actually type anything out that I want to. And if you highlight areas within the canvas, you get options to bold certain content or italicize it. You can even change the size of your content right here. Tip number four is to pick and prod and ask questions to the canvas by highlighting specific areas that you want it to work on. Let's say I wanted to give a condensed version of the table of contents. I could just highlight all of it right here. And then I could just ask ChatGPT and I could say condense this section so that you can work with just specific pieces and parts of the document. So let's see what it does. It's actually just kind of layering it down into the bigger, less granular topics. Tip number five is to use the suggested edits tool. The first option here in the toolbar, which can be found in the bottom right corner is suggest edits. So if I just hover over this down here, this little bubble and I click on it, I'm going to get suggest edits. I can send that off. And now it's actually commenting into my writing here. It says it added five comments. Let's scroll through and see what it added. So if I go down, I'll see that the highlighted sections are comments. So if I click into here, it's going to give me different suggestions and then I can apply those to the document. And I can have ChatGPT go in and make these improvements that it's suggesting. So rather than just getting these one shot responses and then having to manipulate a prompt to get it to output something, now we're actually getting it to look at our document as if it's an editor or a publisher. It's suggesting here that we make this a little bit simpler and we make it more of a nice introduction, a more engaging direct introduction for our readers. And I think that's a great way to start things off since this is the introduction in chapter one. So I'll apply that and we'll wait for it. And it should go through and make it a little bit more engaging. And it also made it a little shorter and maybe a little bit more enticing to read, helping us understand phenomena from falling apples to the movement of galaxies. So I could highlight that. I could make it italic if I wanted to, just to highlight that it's important. Let's see what this next comment is. Yup, I agree. Let's go ahead and apply. Tip number six is to quickly and easily adjust the length of your articles. So if I hover down to the right side again, we have our handy toolbar that pops up and I can click on this next option up here called adjust the length. If I click on it, it has this handy slider that allows me to drag it around and decide how long I want this to be or how short I want it to be. So let's make this the shortest textbook in the world. I'm going to send it off. And now it's really drilling down and making the whole thing shorter, not just this initial table of contents here. Tip number seven when using Canvas is to change the reading level. We're gonna hover over our tools over here once again, and I'm gonna go up to this middle one here, reading level. And if you wanna drag it to a higher reading level, you could do that. You could go all the way up to graduate school, but if you want to, you can go all the way down to a kindergarten reading level. So let's go ahead and turn this into a children's book. I love how it keeps all of the topics in here and it makes the heading big ideas about gravity. 
Tip number eight is to change the language of your writing. This makes it simple to actually go through and change specific parts if you're a translator or even if you're just someone who's learning a language and you wanna work through a document. Let's say over here in the main chat, turn this into Spanish. And it's gonna go through and turn the entire table of contents and the entire textbook into a Spanish version. And then let's say I was learning Spanish. I could go through and actually read this. And then as I'm reading it, I could translate individual pieces by asking ChatGPT translate to English. So I can check myself and I can see exactly what that's supposed to say. And as I'm reading in a different language, I can just do live translations here. Moving along now to tip number nine, I thought it would be appropriate to add some emojis since this is a children's version of the textbook now. So to add emojis, I can just hover over the toolbar, go up to the top one here and I can add emojis, send it off. And that's gonna go through and add these beautiful emojis. And it did go a little overkill with the emojis. So I said a little overkill, let's step back on the emojis a bit. So once you've made it to your final draft, now you're ready to read through the document. So now I recommend using the edit and explain feature. Edit and explain can be accessed by hovering over any of these blocks right here that highlight these different levels within the article. So I can click on this little bubble right here and I can ask it questions. Like, what does this mean? And as you can see, it says asked chat GPT. So it's going to query it as a question or an edit that needs to be made. So if I clicked on this instead, I went ahead and I said, edit this to make it more engaging. In that case, it would actually pick up that I wanted it to edit it. It still says asked down here, but it actually edited it for me right here, as you can see. And here it doesn't say edited, it just explained it for me. We've talked about writing and we're about to get into coding, but the most important thing in life are your relationships. And I really go by this quote, proximity is power. What I mean by that is if you're close to the people who are doing big things, you're going to do big things as well. We've heard this time and time again, it's the five people that you hang around with. It's the bad apple destroys the whole barrel. We hear this stuff all the time, but we don't apply it. But if you want to be a cut above the rest and know the right people in the coming AI age, I recommend you join AI Foundations. AI Foundations is not only social media for your brain where you can actually learn about AI and talk with other members. I mean, look, we just had Josh Ellie here. He just posted an update. We have Gian asking a thoughtful question and posting some AI news. And then we have these mega threads that Drake and I post that start a discussion around the different modules and content that we've created. If you navigate to the classroom tab, you can find all of the content. And this is a treasure trove. And look, I know so many of you have missed part of the growth of this community. You've missed the initial stages of us beginning this community back in June. So what we've done is we've collected all of the replays from the calls so you can go back, you can watch as we evolve and as we grow as a community, and you can get all the helpful nuggets out of these videos that you missed out on before. Just to give you an idea, right now we're covering the AI news once a week and we're going over updates. We're going over a live Q&A with Drake and I if you have any questions about the automations or the prompting that you're doing. And we have the weekly rewards call where we do rewards and introductions of new members. This is where we give away cash and introduce new people to the group. This is always such a heartfelt call every single week. At the end of the week, we do this and we get new people in here and we hear so many great stories, so many cool people that we meet. We just met a guy that just got off Shark Tank and had a deal with Mark Cuban. And on one of our introduction calls, we met someone who we now call one of our great friends who has an app that has 300 million downloads on the app store. But there's some down to earth people on here as well. It's not only high performers, but one thing's for sure, everyone on here has a big heart. And there's a lot of humanity in this group that is surrounded by technology and AI. And now we move on to the coding portion of this video. ChatGPT 4.0 Canvas is amazing at coding. So it's time to put down the pen and dive into the world of coding with ChatGPT 4.0 Canvas. So I'm going to pop this prompt in right here, and this is going to create a text analyzer program using Python. So I say create a Python program with function text analyzer input string 
that returns a dictionary with word count, character count, sentence count, most frequent word and its count, and average word length. And then I have some requirements here, an example, and I say implement this function efficiently, consider performance for larger inputs. And I'm also going to say, turn this into a Kinter interface with a spot to input the text. Let's send this off. And as you can see, rather than writing, this time around, it coded for us. It has the line numbers, it has syntax highlighting, and it even has some different options here in the toolbar. I hear a lot of people trying to struggle through figuring out what an LLM is writing when it comes to code. But what I suggest is using the new add comments feature with 40 canvas. Tip number 13 is to use add comments. I just had a fresh piece of code written by an LLM for me. So I'm going to hover over the toolbar here and I'm going to go to the tool that says add comments. I'm going to send this off. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through all of the text here and it's going to add even more relevant comments that say what this is doing. It already had some, but now it's adding more of an explanation for me or other programmers or developers that look at this. So here, this bit is converting to lowercase and remo removing leading, trailing, white space. This is handling empty or white space inputs. So it's considering all the different cases that it's going to go through and all the potential problems that might pop up. Now, when it comes to actually running your program, sometimes you're going to run into those errors and those errors are just so pesky, so annoying. But one thing you can do to mitigate errors is add logs. Logs are going to tell you where your program is at and it's going to give the LLM an idea of what's working and what's not quite working. Tip number 14 is to add logs to your code using the add logs shortcut tool right here. If I hit add logs, it's going to go through and add logs to my Python for me. These are just print statements that are going to show up inside of the terminal and they're going to give me all of the information that's going on. So it's saying input string after stripping and lowering, and it's going to actually put the input string in dynamically here for me. Tip number 15 is for the coding beginners that need a little bit of help actually running their programs and getting them set up. Tip number 15 is to ask ChatGPT questions about your canvas. I just sent off this simple message here saying explain how to run this code and create the necessary files for it. And then it goes through and actually gives me all the details without writing any new code or making any changes. It's just giving me the commands that I can run and the instructions to set this up. Learning to code and learning to use these tools has never been easier because we now have an assistant that's free to use and gives us direct answers without us having to scour the internet. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop, call it text analyzer. I'm going to double click into it. I'll right click now, hit show more options open with code and I'm going to be using VS code to edit this. Now I can just hit the copy button in the upper right hand corner of the canvas and I can create a new file here. We'll just call it text analyzer GUI.py and I'll paste this code in 106 lines of code. Let's go ahead and run this. And here we can enter the text. So let's just type in, you are awesome for watching the video this far. Please subscribe and like this informative, timely, well-researched video. I love saying nice things about myself. All right, so I have a few sentences in here. I have some punctuation, different capitalization. So let's see what it actually puts out. So when I hit analyze text, it says word count 26, characters count 140. It gives me the sentence count, which appears to be accurate, gives me the most frequent word and the average word length. Tip number 16 is to add features to your programs using Canvas. I want this to generate me a word cloud PNG that includes different sized words for all of the different variations and how frequently they were used. And let's include a sentiment analysis score that shows the color of the words. So to achieve this, I just typed into the chat down here and I said, add a download word cloud button that allows me to download a PNG image of a word cloud of the words from this into my source directory. And then I said, words should be colored based on their sentiment and they should be sized based on how much they are used. So it's gone through, it's edited this for me. I can just copy this again, go back into VS code. And from here, I can just like triple quadruple click and delete it paste. Now we have 150 lines of code. Let's run it.
And what do you know? We have an error here. No module named NLTK. It's on line six. So when you get these module errors, one thing you can always try is pip install NLTK. And it looks like that requirement was somewhat satisfied, but there were some things in there that it didn't have yet. So let's see if this works. I'm going to try to run my program again and it pulls it up. So now let's just say yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Happy, 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 sad, sad. I'll say yes again a couple times and I'll put some periods in here so that we have some actual sentences and maybe it'll confuse it if the period is attached to happy here. I wonder if it'll make that a full word. Now let's go ahead and download the word cloud. And it actually did a pretty solid job here. It picked the sentiment out for no and sad and it made it red and it made yes and happy green symbolizing that it was actually a good sentiment and it allows you to save this figure as well. Let's try an entire novel in here next. I'm going to paste in a text from The Great Gatsby, and this is 110 pages. So I'm going to go ahead and analyze the text first. And it actually did that insanely fast. 50,000 words. The most frequent word is the. Now let's go ahead and download the word cloud and see if it can pull that off. And it does. Wow, it actually includes the in his. And a lot of these are neutral, but some of them are green and some of them are red as well. And I actually thought Gatsby would be a lot bigger. Coding with LLMs is great until you run into an error. Tip number 17 is to use the canvas to get rid of errors. So I have my program here. I've been adding features to it. It's just this massive document now with 277 lines of code. And when I run it, I get some logs down here. My application loads in. But when I hit upload PDF and then I upload one of these, it comes back with this error right here and all of these different lines of code that it's referring to that are having issues. So I'm going to go back into the canvas, hover the toolbar, and then click on fix bugs. I'm going to send that off. And now it's doing its job. It's going through editing, fixing the bugs, and we'll see what it comes up with. I'm going to delete my old code and paste the new code. It's a lot shorter now, so let's see if it runs. And this time we got another error. So if you're continuing to get errors rather than using that edit errors feature, there's another way that you can actually solve these. Just copy your entire terminal down here, all of the errors that you're getting, go back into the canvas, and then you can just type, I'm getting the following terminal error. I'm going to go ahead and paste it and hit enter. And then it's going to have a little bit more context around my error. So it says that it's updated the code. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. We'll try this again. Just continue repeating this step until you get something that actually works. If you enjoyed these tips, I know you'll enjoy the AI Foundations community. We've got a bunch more content just like this, and we get on live calls on a weekly basis. We try to do three to four live calls with different topics, going over everything from automations to AI. And every week, we even have an introduction call where you join the call and you introduce yourself and we get to know you and your exact problems as a community and we figure it out together. So if AI Foundations sounds like a clan that you want to be a part of, you can use the link below this video or in the top pinned comment, and that's going to give you access to AI Foundations at the best possible price. So take action on that and make sure you join the community.